Hello guys and welcome to my quick review video of the Peugeot 3008. This is a mid-size crossover uh, from the cheaper category, from the cheaper uh, part, not the premium Porsche ones. But in this video, I'm gonna tell you what I think is the best of all of them in this category. So in this review, I decided not to bore you with the typical stuff of practicality and how much, uh, you know, how many trolleys can you fit in, how much baggage, because obviously you can go to the dealer and check it all by yourself, sit in the car, see if you like it, see if it's good enough, see if it's big enough, or, or measure, you know, what, whatever you need for your requirements. In this video, I'm gonna concentrate on the, why you should buy this one all over some other crossovers in the market. There are many interesting cars in this market. It's flooded now with cars. Probably one of the leaders is uh, Nissan Qashqai, which I had last year for about two weeks. And I like the car. It just, there was nothing fun about it. There was nothing special about it. Just a boring, typical car for your you know, daily run of the mill, which is a, a good car in all aspects it just doesn't make you uh, smile let's say when you get into it so that's the question i wanted to answer um, when i was trying this car i always wanted to drive it i really look i really think that it looks really funky really fun outside inside it's it's honestly probably in another league with other cars it looks really posh this this layout is amazing so the first question was does it make you you know happy when you try uh, when you drive it when you go to it when you sit inside and the answer is really big yes uh, the inside the outside the design the way it feels the way it handles the way it puts a smile on my face every time I drive it I, I walk towards it this is the the best answer I can give you this is a fun car this is a modern car for young people for you know energetic people and in that sense this car gets top marks so let's get a bit deeper into that number two why i think it's the best crossover in this class is the interior that i mentioned before uh, i never sat in one and to be completely honest when i did now car's interior is in a different league it's very posh very modern you straight away notice that amazing steering wheel and I know this a lot of people simply hate it but I personally love it and now I had the chance to try it and guys you know I don't know why no other manufacturer is doing flat top flat bottoms uh, steering wheels maybe some sports cars some fast cars have them but uh, this one is definitely probably one of the only one only brand you know in the cheap sector that's doing that it's just so nice to hold the car hold the steering wheel uh, on top with the steering wheel is flat you can still see the dials the dials are a bit higher but in general inside the the, the level of quality is absolutely stunning the uh, the materials the uh, the very few buttons all that put together with that steering wheel those flappy paddles look like you know from jetsons you know from spaceship you know look really amazing that stuff so um really uh, looking forward every time i sit in the car to those beautiful dials the beautiful screens the beautiful gear lever the steering wheel is amazing inside is just incredible this car so now let's talk about handling which is probably for me one of the most important things i I'm not a biggest fan of crossovers, SUVs. Uh, the ones that I tried with the Qashqai, with BMW X5, they all lean in the corners. There is no way to cheat the, the loss of gravity. If you have the weight very high up, the car is gonna lean no matter what you do. I don't care if people say that Porsches are very, you know, great handling. They might have great handling, but you, you always feel that because there is no way you can not feel the, the car shifting about when obviously it's uh, getting into corner. But to be honest, this Peugeot is really composed and really interesting how it handles. You can still feel that the, the tires are really, you know, 
big as well so we've got those balloons that also don't, don't help much you know but the way it handles for that kind of car it's really good I really enjoy driving it uh, I can feel that that commanding position being high up above the road see everything and still be able to you know get into the corners and it's it's quite nippy it's not you know something spectacular I, I had the uh, Peugeot 308 that you could see the review probably somewhere there soon in the corner uh, the Peugeot 308 went like on rails with those Michelin Pilot Sport uh, 4S's tires and you know the, the handling it went like on rails honestly it was amazing this one also has Michelin's but obviously the the eco uh, tires for SUVs for crossovers and to be honest I really like to drive it but you always has, have to know uh, how the car is gonna be different than a low placed car with a low center of weight this is not gonna be the same thing so I knew that and on in the terms of crossover this is a really good car in my opinion uh, you can chuck it you know over the bumps as you can see me going over the bumps uh, it's still you know composed comfortable nothing happens and then when you chuck it in the corner you can feel the lean but it's not that bad you can still you know position the car as you want it and it's still gonna do what, what, what you ask it what, what you ask it to do basically and now let's talk about some niggles some bad points about the car uh, I struggled to find some yesterday I have put half of a huge three person sofa in the back uh, wore small you know uh, closet because I was moving stuff uh, pillows and stuff this car honestly practicality wise is amazing inside outside like I said it's amazing the the small niggles I've got is uh, the fuel gauge which is apparently typical no Peugeot's and Citroen's will never show you uh, full even if you you know fill it up to the brim you know uh, the, the diesel in this case it will always show one bar less even though it's a digital screen which is really really strange uh, but that's how it works and uh, basically that's one of the niggles on Peugeot and Citroen cars uh, another one is the glove box which is the similar story that I had on the, the Peugeot 308 the hatchback basically I don't know why they even put uh, a glove box there because the glove box is the size of maybe I don't know a smartphone <laughs> maybe that kind of size you know and the same was in 308 where half of the glove box is unusable because it's, it's, it's it has a cover for the fuses and the other half is the size of a smartphone so the uh, the door to the glove box are huge but inside there is no space for anything whatsoever luckily there is a huge bin here which goes even under the uh, cup holders which is uh, look at my hand all had going inside there so this is huge so at least that there was none no, none like that in the 308 so in this one it's obviously higher taller riding car so it's it's possible to do it so this is amazing but the glove box is really really useless and the last bit is the same story I had in Peugeot last year uh, this car is uh, this very new car almost brand new car and there's still problem with the with the infotainment connecting to the smartphone all I can do myself is connect the Bluetooth and, and, and uh, have a phone call I cannot connect the Android Auto I cannot connect the mirror link the Android Auto yesterday I tried for 15 minutes it was just crashing and saying that the, uh, the version in the software is incompatible with the version in the phone something like that you know I I couldn't understand why why the that's, that kind of you know uh, message came up it doesn't work just keeps resetting you know the, the problem is as well when you connect the phone to the you know to the system if you want to charge it or something it will pop up you know every 30 seconds one minute with the with the pop-up screen that's saying that it cannot connect so you know can't even charge your phone without it you know interrupting you but uh, apart from that you know 
the infotainment is nice, the infotainment is okay. Only those that, that thing with connecting to Android Auto. So there is no sat nav in this one. So obviously it has to be uh, only audio, uh, climate controls and the phone and some settings for the car. So that's, that's, that's about it for the infotainment system. So to sum it up, guys, I really like this car. I enjoy driving it. Perfect car for day-to-day -day scenario inside the city uh, where you have bumps, uh, where you have, you know, I have to go up the curbs and, and park the car all the time. The car is short enough to, to be able to put it anywhere, uh, long enough to, like I said, transport a lot of stuff. And I really like the car inside, very posh, very modern, the dials, the screens, everything outside really nice looking as well in my opinion so i really give this car a thumbs up if you're in the market for that kind of crossover i really recommend it and i would probably go for this one definitely over uh Qashqai. Uh, not sure about other cars but i really wanted to try this one i'm really glad i did the the automatic gearbox really nice uh, shifting gears really fast it's just effortless you just sit down in the car and just you know steer left and right it's really easy and really nice uh, car so thank you guys for watching hope you enjoy let me know in the comments any questions about the car anything you want to know i will try to answer as soon as possible and thanks again don't forget to subscribe see you in the next one lucas out